and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hi, welcome back to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm Jen Liddy, your host. And today I'm introducing you to a woman named Claudia. Claudia used to work for a huge company and she was the HR person there. She had a big job. And at the age of 40, something happened with her life where she knew she wasn't going to have that job forever and her life completely changed. She was really scared of not having the security of a desk job and didn't know if she was brave enough to make the leap to running her own company, even though she had had years and years of experience. I wanted to share Claudia's story with you because Claudia took a a little while to sit in in indecision, and then she really looked at the core values of what was important to her, and she decided she wanted to be in charge of herself. She was really looking for freedom. So she started her own company, and today she tells us the story of how she brought it to life. But she had some limiting thoughts that she's going to talk about today. And I want you to listen closely as she talks about the things that kept her kind of stuck. One of them was that she didn't really believe that what she had to offer to the world was very important. She didn't really believe that people needed it or wanted it. And the second thing that she struggled with was wondering why people would want to work with her specifically when there were lots of other practitioners that they could go to. Claudia's story is a very typical one of my clients, and that's why I really am grateful to her for sharing it with you. And I want you to listen to what she has to say. She gives you some great nuggets here, and you'll learn how to work through your blocks to create the thing that you want, whether your thing is to bring a, bring an idea to life or reach your goal you need to know that you're not alone and that you're going to run into some stumbling blocks. So listen to what Claudia has to say. I'll see you on the other side and I hope you enjoy meeting Claudia Costi. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's interview. Uh, My interview series is all about women who have taken a leap, women who have had an idea in their head to bring a passion to life and they've made the leap They've, they've taken courageous action, and I want to introduce you to these women. And today's person who I'm interviewing is Claudia Costi. Claudia is an esthetician, and she owns a salon called the Epidermis Gal in DeWitt, New York. And she is a skincare specialist, but she wasn't always a skincare specialist. And I want you to hear her story today as she introduces your, you to her and how she made the leap from idea to reality. So, Claudia, thank you for taking time today because I know you're very busy. You have kids and a home and a business, so I can't wait to hear everything that you have to share. Thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. My pleasure. It's exciting. I would love for you to start with telling us briefly who you are, what you do, and how you describe the dream that you brought to life. Um, Okay. Well, as you said, my name is Claudia. I um, own the Epidermis Gal, which is a studio in the Sola Salons in DeWitt, New York. Um, I specialize in skincare, mainly facials, peels, that type of thing. Um, I love to do um, eyelash extensions and eyelash keratin lips. I have a, um, a small manicure business as well that operates out of the same studio all about just, I just kind of follow what I think is the newest thing or the thing that looks to be the most challenging, kind of depends, Mm -hmm. and go with that. My story on how I got here is kind of um, interesting. Mm -hmm. I used to work in corporate HR and I did that for um, a number of years and I was faced with a situation one at one point. I 
found myself not working for the company that I was going to work for for the rest of my life. Okay. And it was kind of a, it was kind of an oh shit moment, really. Um, you know, I was given a, a, a nice severance and I was able to take some time and just kind of think about um, what I wanted to do. And I was lucky enough in that aspect that I could take a little bit of a breather. But the change happened to you. You didn't happen to the change. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, you know, kind of went through a lot of different emotions, tried to get myself another full-time desk job. And as I was on this interview path, I kind of was like, what the hell am I doing? I don't want to do this. I don't want to work behind a desk anymore. Like let's, let's, let's take a break. And probably about 15 years prior to this, my dad at one point had asked me to make a list of all the things. If I could do anything in the world, what would I want to do? And if I had, you know, like the ability to do that financially and all the education resources at my fingertips, what exactly was it that I would want to do? So, you know, I kind of like thought about that at one point and I was just like, oh crap, I wish I had that list. Oh, well, you know, whatever. And went on my merry way. Can I just interrupt you for one second? So you got kind of this thing happened to you, this decision happened to you, you got some severance so that you could make, you could actually breathe and take some time, but you're, you're, are you, you're describing kind of being wishy-washy or passive about making the decision. Am I right about that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why I do you was, think that I wasn't was? sure. Why do you think that you were so not like determined at that moment? Um, I think because there's some sort of security behind that full-time desk job. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really sure if I was brave enough to make the leap and be completely responsible for myself. I mean, yeah, you're responsible for yourself when you go to a desk job (laughs) or a full-time job working for someone else. But, you know, there are some things that are handed to you, your insurance, your, you know, you don't have to have a business license because somebody else has already taken care of that. There's all sorts of things that I was scared about, like terrified that, you know, I had to be the one responsible for that. So you had the luxury kind of of having the severance, but it was kind of a double-edged sword. Like it was a luxury, but it also didn't, it allowed you kind of sitting in indecision yeah. for a while, right? It didn't, it didn't really push me to make a decision probably as fast as I should. Okay. so. I always think that things happen for us. And so there was something, there was a reason that you did have to sit in that indecision. And I'm curious what you got out of all that time you took to make the decision. Basically what I got out of it was that I wanted to be in charge of myself Mm -hmm. for the rest of my life. I wanted to be the one that made the decision about when I worked, when I didn't work, what things I could go to for the kids, what events, what, you know, I wanted to be responsible. I didn't want to have somebody else dictate to me what my day was going to look like. I wanted to be in charge of it. And also, I bet there was a piece of it like, I don't ever want to go through that again. I don't ever want to be in a situation where I'm told I have to go. Like, I want to be in charge of my own destiny. 100%. Yes. Good for you. So tell me what you came to. What, What did the dream look like after you kind of sat in it for a while? So I started kind of brainstorming, you know, like, what would I do? So, okay, my background is HR. I have my human resources professional certificate, you know, like, what, what is it about HR that I really liked? Did I want to start a business that was HR related, that kind of thing? And then I realized, you know, like, kind of just one of these, like, deep thought moments that really what it wasn't, it wasn't about HR. It wasn't about policy. It wasn't about anything like that. It was about helping people. And making people, making people's lives better because, you know, whatever reason, I help them with an employee issue, I help them with an employer issue, I help them with a health insurance issue, you know, like I was the, the person that people came to in crisis. Mm-hmm. And what did I like about that? And it was, so it all came down to helping people. So then one day I was sitting in my bathroom. And I was exfoliating and I was putting on a mask. And I was like, you know what? I have been a product junkie my whole life. Like if you could see the amount of money that I used to spend on this stuff, horrendous. So then I started thinking like, why the heck wouldn't I try to do something like this? You know, like, okay, so these products are my passion. Helping people is my passion. Why not put the two together and, you know... So I just kind of started Googling, you know, like esthetician, what it really entailed, what it, you know, 
um, schools in the area because obviously I needed the training. Mm -hmm. So um, that just, I mean, it kind of like very simply came together that way. There was no like big bam, holy crap, this is what I'm going to do. So, you know, I enrolled myself in school. I was obviously the oldest person there. You know, some of these, (laughs) some of these girls were not legal to even drink yet. And here I am turning 41. (laughs) But what I love about this part of the story is you gave yourself permission to take time, first of all. And I don't want to look at it as a regret or something that that was a problem. Like you needed that time and you took the time and you kind of just were exploring. And then the next thing that I love about the story is you started just Googling and you weren't afraid to be like, oh, I'm probably going to have to go back to school. Not, oh my God, I'm going to have to go back to school. And I'm going to be the oldest person there. Like you just had some expectations about it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be cheap. It's not going to be, you know, like it's not going to be like, I'm not going to make friends there. Probably these people are going to be younger than me. And so I love that you knew it was going to be hard. Yep. Yep. That's really important. Um, you know, there was some, some things that I had to give up because, you know, I was a single mom with three kids yeah, and you know, like I had been very involved in the school and I really had to give it up. I kept um, like a couple volunteer things that I did, but that was it pretty much. And then it was just like school and work. And I, I, I love that you're talking about what you had to give up because when we want something new, we have to let something else go. And in order to do that, a lot of my clients will tell me that they're afraid to disappoint people. Like, I don't want to give this up because I'm going to disappoint people. So did the school shut down when you weren't able to help nope. them? And did your children die? Nope. Do your children <laughs> hate you now? <laughs> no. Nope. Do you have a terrible relationship with your children now? No. And I have to tell you, like, we would all sit and do our homework together. All of us, the four of us, and they loved it. Like, I feel like there's more respect coming from them now than there ever was. And they're That's still amazing. young, so, but like- That's a really love, good point. Yeah, they love to hear it. They love to talk about it. Remember when we used to do our homework with mom, you know? like <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. So it actually brought you closer together. It really did. Hmm. Yep. And kept everybody on track. Yes. I mean, then I know everybody's doing their homework, including right. me. Including you. So I want to know, why is bringing the, the dream of having your own studio so important to you? And also, why is it so important to the world? Oh, I don't know why it's so important to the world. I don't know if I can... I think you do. <laughs> the reason it's so important to me, right after school, I did go to work for someone else. And I could not put up with this is going to sound awful. I couldn't put up with the other women. Mm-hmm. So catty, so much chatter about each other behind each other's backs. It just, I would get a stomach ache every time I knew I had to work a shift. And I, you know, I also, you know, it was building clientele. So I didn't have a ton of clients. And as an hourly employee, I really felt like I was kind of wasting my boss's time just sitting there. You know, mm-hmm. they didn't have a huge walk in business. So it's not like I was passing up clients by not being there. Mm-hmm. So it just kind of, you know, I just, I really just wanted to be on my own terms. I wanted to. That's your number one thing. Freedom is the core value that you really wanted. Yes. And now you and I talk a lot about in our coaching sessions, we talk a lot about why your work is important for other women. And I know why your work is important for other women, but so we know why your work is important for you, but I want you to talk a little bit about why your work is important for other women. And here's why I think this is important. When a lot of women want to make the leap, they will tell themselves, oh, it's just so fluffy or it's unimportant or I sell purses or I sell makeup or I sell skincare. And they, they tell themselves a story that the world really doesn't need this thing. And so that gives them permission to hide and stay stuck, which you did not do. So what does being an esthetician, what, why is it important to other women that you, that you offer this? Well, to be honest, when I first got started, I kind of felt like you just said, I felt like it was a frivolous expense that nobody really needed and that kind of thing. And then once I kind of took off a little bit, I have clients that really need me, Mm -hmm. that they are struggling with adult acne or they're struggling with rosacea and they don't want to be on medication or the medication that they've tried never did anything for them but a facial every three weeks makes a a complete difference. And basically, you know, like I'm not selling you a facial. I'm not selling you a product. I'm selling you (laughs) self-confidence. 
I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so can I tell a little bit of our story about how we know each other? Absolutely. Please. So do. Claudia um, was referred to me through her sister-in-law and she joined my thriving solopreneur program, which is a, it's a class to help people go, go from idea to actual taking action and marketing and selling. And that was the big thing at the very beginning. You were like, I don't really know how I help people. And within these five months, you've really done a 180 on that because mm-hmm. you know how much more confident your clients are just being out in the world, which confident women make the world a better place. Like everything is better when you feel confident. You're um, When you're more confident in yourself, you're a better mom. You show up better for your partner. You show up better for your job or your business. You show up better just in the world, right? Yep. And I'm going to tell my my teeny tiny personal story here about working with you. I, for my business, I have to be on camera a lot because that's part of my marketing plan. And so I do a lot of videos, a lot of lives. And I'm really, I, I, at the time I met you, I was really, really uncomfortable being on camera. So I've also had a transformation just within the time I've been working with you because you gave me my lashes and as much as I love my lashes and how they, they look on camera and how I feel like they make my eyes pop and like I just feel more confident, my favorite thing about them is that I never wear makeup at all anymore. I just kind of can leave the house and know that at least my eyelashes are done. Isn't that amazing? I think it's so amazing. Yeah. And so I wanted to thank you. Like I'm a personal, you know, client of yours, but I feel like I'm a success story because within the five months that I've been working with you and having these uh, my own transformation has been 180 degrees also. So I'm like a living, breathing, real life person who's saying like, you do matter because it's not just frivolous. It makes us feel more confident. You self-confidence. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I'm really proud of you that you made that leap. And I think a lot of women will spend years circling the drain going, mm-hmm. oh no, it's just this luxury item and nobody's going to buy it. And We also had early conversations about we live in Syracuse and nobody has money here, which is total bullshit because people do have money here. People do have money. And, you know, honestly, like there's, there's dry spells. There are. And you just kind of have to recognize that it's not anything that you're doing wrong. Maybe you're just not putting yourself out there enough. Like I know for sure that that's my issue when I, when I'm quiet because my, you know, my clients are in between Peel series, or they're just away, or it's summer and nobody really wants to touch their face. I know that, you know, it's because I'm not pushing enough. Mm -hmm. And it's not for those clients that I have already talked to and know what their plan is. It's for the new people that have no idea what I'm doing yet. Right. And so that's a time where you could shift that thought a little bit. And it's not necessarily a slow time. It's a time you can work on your business versus in your business. You spend a lot of time working in your business. Yes. And those, those times can actually be a gift for us to help us grow to the next level. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So you've, you've actually answered tons of my questions. You're talking about the painful, destructive feelings and thoughts that kept, would have kept you stuck. Do you have any other, that one, the, one, the big one being this is just fluffy and frivolous. Do you have any other harmful thoughts that kept you stuck in the beginning? Oh, for sure. Um, you know, why would anybody want to come to me? I'm a baby esthetician. That one was huge. I had a, um, I had a woman in Sola tell me that, you know, I was foolish for starting out on my own because I didn't have enough, I hadn't logged enough hours. I didn't have enough clients. She knew nothing about my business. She knew nothing about how many clients I had. She knew What a naysayer, huh? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, like that will, that haunts you. It does. You know, when you're sitting there and you're like, oh, my book went so from so full to not full this week. What do I do? Mm -hmm. It haunts you. Yeah. So those negative thoughts and then the, the words from the outside people, I know you have a very supportive partner and your kids are very supportive, but sometimes it's, it's somebody we don't even know who we bump up against that makes us yeah. really question ourselves. Like self-doubt can come from anywhere. From anywhere. Yeah. And you know, the, one of the things that I did in the very beginning was I built my tribe. I had my kids, I have my partner, I have, you know, and I just built these like some are clients and some are not some are just other entrepreneurs that are not interested in my services and that's totally okay and it's just people that when you have those feelings of self-doubt that you could like pick up the phone and be like holy crap you're not even going to believe what where my head is today and then they'll be like oh no no knock it off (laughs) (laughs) right 
I hear this a lot that the, th- so the tool and strategy that has helped you is having a tribe, having people yeah. who are there to lift you up when you start to feel the self-doubt. Yep. So I yep. hear that over and over. That's a really important uh, tool for you. So mm-hmm. what, I'm curious, what's one thing that you wish you would have known back then bef- when the self-doubt was so creeping in and, and you weren't sure if you should do it? I think where like my personal place where I screwed up in this whole thing is I was so eager to learn and so eager to be like the best at everything that I almost got myself. Well, I did get myself. I almost like overtrained myself. Do you know what I mean? Like I, instead of just focusing on the few things that I love to do, I am trained in so many different things that it's hard then to focus on what it is I specifically want to advertise. That makes so much sense. And this is actually a pitfall. I see a lot of female entrepreneurs, especially heart-centered entrepreneurs, they tell themselves, oh, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. I need more training. I need more diversification. I need more offers. And then what happens is there's like, it's too diffuse in the marketplace. You don't even know what to call yourself. You don't know when somebody says, what do you do? You're like, oh, I do a little bit of this and I do a little bit of this. Exactly. And that's, you know, so we do a lot of passive action, you know, listening and reading and taking another course and getting another certification. And that can really be a way of staying in paralysis. It's a way of hiding but it doesn't feel like we're hiding because it feels like, no, 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 I'm totally taking action. Yeah. Look at me. I'm so busy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, what are you doing about that now? So you're overtrained or you're overqualified or you have too much gear. What are you doing about that? So I made a promise to myself that I would not take another class until I started using like everything. Mm-hmm. And those things that I don't use, I'm just going to like, okay, you know what? I'm going to chalk it up to, okay, great. I'm going to stop marketing them. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, yes. I'm going to stop pushing for them because, you know, like people don't know that I do it. I'm not confident in doing it because I haven't done it since training, that kind of thing. Right. It's interesting though. I did get a flyer the other day for a class in September and I was like, oh, I want to do this. Oh, I want to do this. And I was like, no, 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 no. I have to either figure out what I'm doing with these other three services that I have that I don't use or, and sell the equipment and move on from it. Or I don't know. I don't know. So you're, you're niching down and really focusing. That's how you're solving this problem. Yes. Good for you. So how, what would you say to a woman in your position? I know there are a lot of women specifically in the um, the health and, you know, self-care field Mm -hmm. who really want to go out on their own. They're sick of the gossip. They're sick of the drama or they're sick of their corporate job. And they want to do something that feels more creative and they want to create their own. Well, you use the word tribe or community. When I come into your salon, it's like a lovely hour for myself. There's nobody gossiping around me. It's just me and you. Mm -hmm. And that is something that you have created. You know, you've created the environment that you wanted. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of women out there who want that for themselves. They can like picture the whole thing. I bet you could see your salon and how it would look before you even like got in there. 100%. When I walked in and I saw the studio and the blank canvas, I, I just knew exactly what I wanted to create. I didn't know exactly like colors and that, but I knew the feeling. I knew when I walked in there, how I wanted to feel and I, how I wanted my clients to feel. And so then I just created that. So what advice would you give to somebody who is an even babier esthetician than you <laughs> who wants to do something like this or a creative woman who's just terrified and has all the same stories that you did? What advice would you give? I would honestly just, I would tell them just to keep at it, you know, like just Take one step at a time, walk before you run, Mm -hmm. you know, work yourself through the blocks. There's going to be blocks that come up and you're just going to have to take them. And, you know, like sometimes you're just going to have to like take a breather and be like, okay, you know what? I have to fix this before I can focus on this again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, again, I was lucky enough to be financially solvent enough to do that, but you just have to take it one step at a time. And maybe that is that you continue to work for your corporate job for longer than you want to, or Mm -hmm. you continue to work at the salon while you build your other thing on the side and get it ready and whatever. And so then when you make the leap, 
you're confident in it. You're not just like out there, like just jumping and hoping you're going to grab onto something. Yes. And so it, while you're doing that, you're saying that the strategies that you used were um, to have a tribe that was supportive. Yep. Uh, you've also got a coach and a coaching community, you know, and yep. so you're able to use that. And um, you know that it's going to be hard. Like you, uh, mm-hmm. you're expecting the discomfort. You're not expecting to see the whole path and have it be easy. Right. right. I think a lot of people, when they go in their, their life, and I see this a lot with women who have an idea, they, they're like, oh, but I don't know how. And there's a secret that nobody's telling me. Did you right. feel that? I did. I remember even just like getting like my business license, you know, like I had to pass the state boards for nails and um, aesthetics. That was fine. Like I had that under control. I was confident in what I was doing. It was time consuming, but whatever. So then it was just kind of like, okay, well, I have to get a business license. Well, how do I do it? And why do all these people have these business licenses? It is no big deal. And I have to go downtown to the scary courthouse yeah. to this room that there's like, you know, it's ancient. And she has a typewriter and it was like nothing. Like I like told her. <laughs> it takes like five and a half seconds, right? Yes. yes. I like walked in and I was just like, um, I need a business license. She was like, yeah, okay, let's do it. And I was like, oh, okay. It's just this easy. You know, like I walked out of there and I felt like I had literally had like, cause I'm a huge procrastinator. I had put it off for probably two weeks mm-hmm. and I walked out of there and I was just like, I was like dancing in the street. I'm like, oh my God, I did it. I love that. So that becomes evidence that you can do hard things. Yes. Well, because then that like kind of that I think was like the tipping point for me. You know, like I had all the personal stuff I needed, but then I got the business license and I got the business insurance and I got, you know, and so then it was just like build, 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 build. Yeah. yeah. So tell me a little bit about where your business is headed next. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. I think I had a couple different dreams when I started. One was to own my own like full service spa Mm -hmm. instead of just me, like hire other baby estheticians to come in and work and learn and that kind of thing. So that's always been in the back of my head. Starting my own skincare line Mm -hmm. has always been in the back of my head. Love that. I know. I, um, again, product junkie. So it's kind of like, you know, no matter how many lines I have or how many different vendors I talk to, nobody has exactly what I want, you know, like this line has this product and that works great. And then this line has this product and that works great, but no line has everything that I want. So why not create it? Why not? Exactly. That's like, that's the question that gets you started, right? Yeah. And so as we think about scaling your business from being a solopreneur where you do everything, which is, which is what you're doing now. And it's exhausting to be a solopreneur, Mm -hmm. um, you know, to scale. And right now it's like you're trading dollars for hours and exactly. That's just how it is in the beginning. That's how it is. And then we scale and we either uh, rent out space or we have employees or we create products to go that complement our services. So I love that your brain is considering all of this because Mm -hmm. it means that it means that something's going to happen. I love that you're not saying that you're not saying that no, no, this is enough. This is where I'm going to stop. And if that was what you wanted, that would be great too. Right. Like I know in the back of my head, my lease is up next November. Okay. So I have some time to figure it out. And so like these ideas, you know, kind of float through my head and I guess it's kind of like, you know, and maybe next November comes and I want to sign another year lease mm-hmm. and that's fine too. Mm -hmm. I imagine in your business, word of mouth is quite important. It is huge. I just had a situation the other day where on Eastside Moms, that Facebook group, somebody asked where they could get a facial. And I had three friends, two are clients, but another one has never been to me. She's just another entrepreneur in the area. She recommended me. So of course, you know, like I sent them a little quick message, like to three, the three of them, you know, like, thank you so much, my tribe. I just Mm -hmm. grabbed another client. Like, and all this woman wanted was you know, like at the end of the summer, her face feels dull. She wanted some, you know, like she wants to just brighten up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that's the kind of, you know, that's the marketing that you're, that's working for you right now. Exactly. And I really want to talk about this for people who don't get into business because they're afraid of marketing. I know Mm -hmm. I was terrified of marketing in my first business. And I think that it had a really negative effect on me, Mm -hmm. but in my next business, I've had to embrace marketing and I've learned a ton about it. And I think it keeps women stuck. You know, yeah. they're like, I don't want to market. I hate marketing. Marketing feels pushy. And that's okay. You're saying you don't even market. 
Right. You you have a whole word mouth business. Yeah. Like my, um, you know, my Facebook and my Instagram are pretty quiet because I am, you know, like it's almost like I'll put together a post and then I go to pull the trigger and I panic. And it's that like voice inside my head. That's like, why are you doing this? People are going to make fun of you. You know, Mm -hmm. like, do you really want people to see this side of you? And I need to just, that's, that's where my, that's where I still get stuck. I'm actually going to offer you why your brain is doing that to you. Okay. Your brain is saying, if I put stuff out there, people are going to come and I'm busy as it is. Yes. I'm maxed out as it is. I don't have a baby esthetician under me. It's just me. And Mm -hmm. I've got these three kids and I'm thinking about doing this and I'm thinking about doing that. And I've got a busy life. So if I put this out there, I'm going to be too busy. It's just your brain protecting you. It's like the fear of success. Yes. Yes. And so acknowledge that your brain is doing that and give it, you know, thanks because it's just protecting you. And you know that when you're ready to have more clients, maybe when the kids go back to school, maybe it will feel easier to do some social media marketing. So you don't have to beat yourself up about it. Inquire with your brain. Okay. Like, well, what do you, why is this happening? Why is this, why is this protecting me in this way? Mm -hmm. It's just an old story, but it's protecting me. And then the next question is, do I need to be protected? Mm -hmm. And you'll know when you don't, you'll be able to tell your brain, look, chill out. I get that you're freaked out that we're going to get too busy, but I'm in total control of my business. Right. Right. Because, and I I have to remind myself too, just because I can't accommodate somebody immediately doesn't mean they're going to run for the hills. That's right. You know, like it just kind of like reiterates the fact that I am busy. And so, you know, like, okay, so your appointment can't be tomorrow, but it could be next Thursday. And do you know why I'm so busy? Because I'm so damn good at what I do. (laughs) You know, and I want to tell you, like, in all transparency, I've struggled with the same thing because somebody will call me for a discovery call, which is like the chat that we have before they decide if we work together. And sometimes I'm booked out three or four weeks and they can't get in to see me until the next month. And I, I always say to my coach, oh my God, this is so terrible. And she's like, What's terrible about having a coach who's completely booked and has a wait list? Like that means that you're just really good at what you do. And that really helped me. So you don't, you can tell your brain like, chill out. I don't have to over commit to anything or service anybody that I can't handle. It's that my business is in my control. Right. Right. And when you come from corporate or you come from teaching like me, very little feels in our control. True. Very true. I'm so used to other people making all sorts of decisions for me. That's right. So know that your brain is just protecting you and you can thank it. And when you're ready to open up your schedule and see more people, then you, the uh, marketing will probably feel easier for you. That's true. That's true. I love that we got a little coaching session in here. I too. know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Claudia, thank you so much. So people can connect with you at theepidermisgal.com or epidermisgal.com. Is it the epidermisgal or epidermisgal.com? epidermisgal.com. Okay. So people can connect with you at epidermisgal.com. They can find you on Facebook and Instagram. And then I will also put the links uh, in the, the notes so that okay. people can connect with you. And I highly recommend that if you live in the 315 that you get something done by Claudia because she's got so much amazing gear in her salon. I haven't even <laughs> uh, um, benefited from all of it yet. But also I have when I have questions about my skin, she's just so eager and easy to help me. So, um, and if nothing else, I love my lashes. So thank you, Claudia. <laughs> thank you, Jen. I really appreciate your time today. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Bye. I'm so thankful to Claudia for sharing her story with us. I know that it's not easy for her, so I very much appreciate it. If you, like Claudia, have an idea you'd really like to make real, and you're feeling stuck, and you're not sure how, and you know that there's something in your way, some beliefs that you have, reach out to me. This is what I specialize in helping women accomplish. You can master your time so that you can have space to master what's going on in your mind. And when you do those two things together, your whole life shifts and you're going to be living a completely different kind of life than you could ever imagine. Tune in next week. I look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions, reach out to me. And I'd love if you could leave some feedback or a review just so that we can help other women who need to hear this information get it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Bye. 
Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye. Thank you.